Hello and welcome to the Chemistry Made Simple podcast. I'm your host Matthew Macario and this is the podcast where you get chemistry confident and we take you from point A to grade A. Hello, welcome back. I hope that you're well. Today we're going to be talking about elimination reactions in halogenoalkanes. So we're going to talk about what do we mean by an elimination reaction and then we're going to talk about how that reaction proceeds and what the conditions are required for it to happen. So firstly, what do we mean by an elimination reaction? Well, in a halogenoalkane, that's a reaction where we're going to lose two atoms from the compound, from the molecule. And the atoms that we'll lose are the halogen atom and one of the hydrogen atoms. So one of our products will be a hydrogen halide, for example, hydrogen bromide. How does this reaction happen? Well, it happens when we're using a strong base and we can use hydroxide ion as that base. Now, you'll recall in our previous episode about nucleophilic substitution that we can use a hydroxide ion to do a nucleophilic substitution. So how do we make it behave as a base and not do a nucleophilic substitution but perform an elimination reaction? Well, we use very different conditions. In this case, we're going to use hydroxide ion dissolved in ethanol. We're going to use hot reaction conditions and that is going to make the elimination reaction be the reaction that occurs. So just to repeat, that's hot ethanolic potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide, no water present. So in this reaction, what happens is the hydroxide is acting as a base. So when it comes across a molecule of the halogenoalkane, one of the hydrogen atoms on a carbon adjacent to the carbon to halide carbon will break its bond with its carbon and bond to the hydroxide making a water molecule. Both the electrons in that carbon to hydrogen bond will form a new bond between that carbon and the carbon that has the halogen atom attached to it, making a double bond. And at the same time, that carbon to halogen bond will break and both electrons in that bond will go with the halogen atom. Therefore, a halide ion will be lost from the molecule too. So the main product is an alkene, a new double bond has been formed between the two carbons in what was the halogenoalkane. The halogen atom has been lost and that molecule is now an alkene. Our other products are a water molecule and the halide ions, for example a bromide. There is going to be a competing reaction. Some of the hydroxides may want to make a nucleophilic substitution and some may want to cause an elimination reaction with molecules of the halogenoalkane they come across. And in fact, it's a commonly asked question as to how to make one reaction occur more than the other. And what you'll be expected to do is state the conditions for the preferred reaction. So for the elimination reaction, the one we're talking about today, the conditions are to start with no water present, start with our potassium or sodium hydroxide dissolved in hot ethanol and to do the reaction in hot conditions. That will drive the elimination reaction to be the main reaction that occurs. If we would prefer nucleophilic substitution to occur, then the reaction should be done with aqueous potassium or sodium hydroxide and room temperature that is more likely to cause most of the molecules that react to react down the nucleophilic substitution pathway. This is something worth to find a question on and tackle that in the time after you've listened to this episode to try to remember this because this is a very common question in exams that I've seen. You are expected to understand the difference between the two different reaction pathways and be able to state the appropriate conditions for the particular reaction that is preferred or be able to state the type of reaction and the product type for given reaction conditions and in both cases of course we're dealing with a hydroxide ion so that is what is causing the possibility that both reactions are possible with a halogenoalkane. 
So if you have any further questions on this topic, on this reaction type, then please do come to the podcast Patreon community and ask those questions. I'm going to be very happy to go into a lot more detail there. There's a link in the episode description so you can follow that or it's patreon.com slash chemistry made simple. You can also find me over at Instagram at chemistry made simple. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you found it useful and if you have had value from it, do consider visiting our Patreon community at patreon.com slash chemistry made simple where you'll be able to ask deeper questions about this topic and get more support for your studies too. So I look forward to speaking to you again in the next episode and until then, do look after yourself and goodbye.